Hi everyone and welcome. My name is Sushmita Bhattacharjee and I am a senior solutions architect at AWS. In this video, we will demonstrate how you can start exploring the Amazon Q generative SQL feature in Amazon Redshift Query Editor. This feature can generate SQL recommendations from natural language prompts, thereby simplifying query authoring and increasing your productivity. The feature was launched during AWS reInvent 2023 and is currently available for public preview. To use this feature, first go to the AWS console homepage and search for Amazon Redshift here from the search bar or click on the service name if already available in your recently visited services. The Amazon Q Generative SQL feature can be used either on a provision cluster or Redshift serverless endpoint. You can refer to the AWS documentation on how to create a Redshift cluster. This feature is available for public preview in the AWS regions of North Virginia, Oregon, and Frankfurt. For this demo, we will be using the North Virginia region. If you are using Amazon Redshift for the first time, you will see the option to try Redshift serverless within the Amazon Redshift homepage. You can click on it and create a default Redshift serverless namespace and workgroup. You can also try this demo on any of your existing clusters. Here on the screen, you can see the Redshift serverless dashboard with the default namespace and the default workgroup that I have pre-created and will be using for this demo. Now, to open the Amazon Redshift Query Editor v2, you can click on Query Data here on the top right of the console. Alternatively, you can also click on Query Editor v2 from the left navigation pane of the Redshift console. Either of these options will open the Amazon Redshift Query Editor v2 in a new tab. In the Amazon Redshift Query Editor v2, you can see the serverless default workgroup available in the left pane. Now click on the name or click here and click on Create Connection. For this setup, we will be using Federated User to connect to the database. Now click on Create Connection. Once the connection is established, you will see three default databases with a sample database, sample data dev, expand this database, and you will be able to see three sample schemas available. We will be using the TPCDS schema for this demo. Next, for the TPCDS schema, click on the icon next to the schema name to open sample notebooks. Here, you'll get a notification that you do not have a sample database yet. Do you want us to create a sample database for you? Click on Yes. When open for the first time, it will take some time for the sample notebooks to open within the query editor. So here, we'll wait and come back once the notebooks are available. And it took about two to three minutes for the sample database to be created and the sample notebooks to open. Please note, the Amazon Q Generative SQL feature in preview is available for Redshift notebooks only. Now, before you start using the Amazon Q Generative SQL in Redshift Query Editor v2, you will need to enable the feature from settings. Now, if you click on any one of the notebooks, you will be able to see the Generative SQL Preview button on the top of the Query Editor console here. So if you click here, you will get the message that Amazon Redshift Query Editor v2 now supports generative SQL functionality. Contact your administrator to activate this feature in settings. In case you are not the administrator, you will need to work with the account admin to enable this feature. Now, to use the feature, you can go to settings from the link here in the message or go to the settings icon on the bottom left of the screen and click on generative SQL settings. In the Generative SQL Settings screen, click on the checkbox for Generative SQL, which will turn on the Generative AI Code Companion for all the users in the account. You can also improve Generative SQL recommendations by sharing the SQL queries run by other users in your account. You will see how to use these commands later in the demo. Now check this disclaimer, which clearly states that your data is secure and private and is not shared across accounts. Your queries data and database schema are not used to train a generative AI foundational model. Your input is used as a contextual prompt to the FM to answer only your queries. Now click on Save. You will see the notice that Generative SQL settings successfully updated. Now click on the Generative SQL Preview button again, and this will open the chat pane on the right side of the Redshift Query Editor console. 
Next, before using the feature, click on each sample notebook and then click on Run All. This will take a few minutes to run all the sample queries and will establish a query history for the TPCDS data. Please note, this step is not mandatory for using the feature for your organization's databases. Once enabled, the response from the feature will improve in accuracy as you keep using the feature. So here, we'll come back once the execution is completed. So the notebooks have now been executed successfully and the Amazon Q Generative SQL feature is enabled and ready for use. Now click on the plus sign here and open a new notebook. So now let's start using the feature. Before you begin using the feature, do ensure that you're connected to the correct database. Also, since we ran the notebooks, the set search path to TPCDS SQL command also got executed. However, if you're creating a new connection, do ensure to run the set search path to the right schema before using the feature. Now let's ask Amazon Q Generative SQL a few simple questions. Let's find the number of unique call centers. In a few seconds, a response will be generated. Let's add the response to the notebook and click on Run. As you can see, a response is getting generated. And you can see that we have six call centers now. Next, let's find the unique year from store sale date. Let's add the question and click on Enter. And the response has been generated. Let's add this to the notebook and click on Run. And as you can see, we would get all the different years in which a sale happened in the stores. Well, now that we know the sale year, let's find the sum of sales per item category for the year 2002. A response has been generated. Let's add this to the notebook and click on Run. And as you can see, for each item category, we have the sum of sales. And this is for the year 2002. So as you can see, the Amazon Q Generative SQL feature in Redshift is personalized to your schema and the queries are automatically generated based on your schema structure. The Amazon Q Generative SQL feature also personalizes to your data domain and even to your conversations. So now that we have done some basic queries, let's do some deep dive to understand the personalization features. First, for that, we will run a few simple queries and move on to more complex ones. So let's start with finding the unique store names from the data stored in the schema. Now let's add the response to the notebook and click on Run. So here we are able to see all the unique store names. Now that we have all the unique store names, so let's find more information about the schema. So let's find what are the unique items sold across various stores. Let's add the response to the notebook and click on Run. As you can see, we now have unique item ID. However, this does not give us any useful information as it does not have the store name. So let's ask the Amazon Q Generative SQL to add the store name as well as the item description. Now add the generated response to the notebook and click on Run. And as you can see, we now have the item ID along with the store name as well as the item description. So as mentioned, Amazon Q Generative SQL feature not only personalizes to your schema or data domain, but also to your conversation. Instead of asking the whole query again, you could simply ask in a conversational manner to add the store name and item description and the correct response got generated. Now let's try a few more questions. So let's try and find the sale date for each item per store. Now let's add the response to the notebook and click on Run. So this time you can see that along with the sold date surrogate key and the item ID, the store name and the item description got automatically fetched and we did not have to ask to add them again.
So now let's add the brand name to the query. Let's add it to the notebook and then click on run. So you can see the store name, the item description, the item ID, the sold date and the brand name all came together. However, the sold date in itself is of no use because this is showing the surrogate key. So let's add the actual sold date from the date dimension. This time, as you can see, a join with the date dimension has been added. And the date value has been fetched now. Let's click on run. Well, now we have our results, the store name, the item ID, the item description, the actual date value, and the brand name. Thus, the Amazon Q Generative SQL feature personalizes to your schema, to your data domain, and to your conversation. Amazon Q Generative SQL for Redshift is personalized to your Amazon Redshift database as well. So let's ask a question. What is the total store sales per year? Let's add the response and click on run. Now let's ask a question that we have asked before. Let's add the response and click run again. And this time we get the error that SS sold it SK specified in using clause do not exist in the right table. Now let's take the query and ask how to fix the query. However, let's change this to dev database first. I'll click enter. A response has been generated. Let's add it to the notebook and click on run. We get an error, so we change the database to sample data dev and click on run again. We still get an error because we tried to fix this using the wrong database. So let's ask again how to fix the query, and this time we are pointing to the right database. Now let's add the new response to the notebook and click on run. And this time the correct response got generated. So you could see that based on the attributes of the selected database, the SQL recommendations are generated. So it is important that we select the correct database before using the feature. As the feature is personalized for your Redshift database, fixes and instructions from one user is applied to other users logging into the schema. So let's ask a question. Find the sum of sale per item for the sale year 2002. Let's add the response to the notebook and click on Run. As you can see here, since we did not specify the mode of sale, all the channels for store, catalog, and web have been added to the query. Now let's add an instruction here. Let's add the instruction to always add item description with item. So as you can see here, the item description has been added along with the item ID as per our instruction. Next, let's create a new user and grant restricted permissions to the user and also grant this monitor role to the user. Open a new editor and run the queries shown on screen. This query will create a new user, DB user, which will be valid until 31st July of 24. We will then grant select on all tables in the schema to this user and then we'll grant this monitor role to the DB user. Do notice here that we are granting only select to the new user. Next, connect to the database as a new DB user. 
go to edit connection and instead of federated user, click on database username and password. In username, add db user and the new password. Click on save. You are now connected to the database as the new db user. Now open a new notebook. Do remember to ensure that sample data dev is selected and also do run the search path to TPCDS. Next, let's ask the same question again. Find the sum of sale per item for sale year 2002. Let's add the response to the notebook and click on Run. And as you can see, without us instructing specifically again, item description automatically got fetched when we ask for item. Let's ask another question. What is the sale date for each item per store? Let's add the response and click on Run. And you can see here in this query, again, item description got automatically fetched. Thus, the instruction from one user got automatically applied to the new user. The Amazon Q Generative SQL feature for Redshift has a number of built-in safety features as well. It will warn you if a generated SQL statement will modify the data. So now let's try to generate a SQL to delete data from a table. Delete data from the table store sales. Along with the generated SQL, Amazon Q gives a message that I detected that this query changes your database. Only run the SQL command if that is appropriate. This is to warn you and protect the database from unintentional modifications to the data. Let's add this to the notebook and then click on run. We get an error. Let's fix this query. And then we now have a correct response. Now let's add this to the notebook and click on run. As you can see, you're getting the error permission denied for relation store sales. If you remember, to this new user, we only gave permission to select from table. Now let's try to insert data. Let's ask Amazon Q Generative SQL to create a query to insert five randomly selected rows from call center table into the call center table again. Again, we get the safety message that I detect that this query changes your database. Let's add it again and then click on run. Again, we get the error permissions denied for relation call center. Thus, even if the feature is able to read and generate SQL responses based on the natural language questions asked, the queries can only be executed based on the permissions granted to the user. Now let's look at a few tips and tricks for using the feature. Be as specific as possible. Instead of asking find names IDs for top three items sold, ask more specifically and clearly find names for the top three items sold across stores. Also, Remember to add your schema to the search path. Example, set search path to TPCDS. And lastly, iterate. Ask follow-up questions to make queries more specific. Ask about errors and what did not work. With this, we conclude our demo on Amazon Q Generative SQL feature in Amazon Redshift Query Editor in public preview. Happy exploring this new and powerful feature and thank you so much for watching.